All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome back, and we have a ton to talk about. The roster update arrived yesterday, and there were quite a few uh, question marks that happened there, which uh, I want to talk about a little bit. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little confused, but looking at some of the statistics and seeing what they've done the last few updates. Now that we have two updates, a little more clear on how they're going to be moving forward with this new timetable in terms of how often they update. It used to be two weeks, and now it's three weeks, so it looks like they're just taking the most recent sample size. The last three weeks are going to be the brunt of what the changes are going to be, and it looks like that will be more and more every week, every update, I should say, as we move forward. So we're going to be looking at the last 15 games and the last 30 games more so than the entirety of the season because there are a bunch of players that I felt should probably have been upgraded a little bit more than they were. And there were some that were upgraded a lot more than I thought they should have been. It doesn't seem like they're, they're keeping uh, very consistent here in some of the things that we did. We're going to go over some of the player upgrades, some that kind of confused me and I'm not so sure why they went this route. Some of them are real head scratchers to me. But we're going to talk about that a bit, and we're also going to talk about all the new content that dropped yesterday. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. We're also going to talk about some early investments for next time because the ground floor is really low here. It's pretty much a uh, non-risk. I also want to know how much you made. I actually wound up making a little over a million stubs on my investments, and this is why I always say to diversify your investments because some may not work out, but some might work out huge. And that's exactly what happened for me, so let's hop into it. Now, this was the big first head scratcher for me was Fernando Tatis. I, I don't quite understand why he got a plus two upgrade. He's not playing all that well in 834 uh, OPS. He doesn't have tremendous defense. He does have great speed, but they gave him upgrades when I really don't feel he should have gotten upgrades in really any of this stuff. I felt like he should have changed, pretty much stayed flat across the board, or maybe even just got downgraded in power versus right. But they chose to upgrade him to a 91 overall, and honestly, I think it's because Machado was dropped down to a gold because he's been struggling, and they want to gatekeep that selection, which is unfortunate. But I do expect Tatis, if he doesn't pick up some production, to go right back down the next one. Another one that was really confusing to me was Ronald Acuna. Ronald Acuna's numbers are significantly better than Fernando Tatis's. Like, even, even defensively, he's better. So, I'm really confused. If you look at his stats this year, in a larger sample size than Fernando Tatis, who hasn't played in over a year, yet they upgrade Acuna. You know, they don't touch his contact against right, which is mind-boggling to me. They did bump up his contact versus left, but they decreased both of his powers. Now, I do know he only has seven home runs but he has a lot of extra base hits and he has a fantastic ops so it's just like you have to have to bump his contact up more or really not touch his power at all i really feel acuna should have been where tatis is and tatis should be where acuna is right now i don't understand what they were doing there that those are a couple head scratchers a couple other ones that got me for a loop here and now given my update video was a week before and will smith just went on a torrid week and i did not make another video after that but i didn't even realize uh, how how torrid that last week was that they bumped him up this much and he does have you know decent defense so I get that that makes sense but Adelise Garcia was another head scratcher to me and not because he's not playing well in the season you see a 795 OPS here 95 OPS now I know his overall is held up based upon defense which is defense is very very good but they chose not to touch his contact against left he's hitting under 200 and they did not touch his contact versus left but there are other guys that are hitting higher than that that they haven't even touched. So it, it, it's, it's, very, it's very confusing to me. Now, it doesn't seem consistent across the board. Some of it looks like, oh, they're really focusing on the last three weeks here. And then some of it's like, okay, they threw that out of the window for this player. And they're just looking at their track record of the last three years. It, this update was very confusing. The first one seemed to make a lot of sense to me. You know, pretty much everything I thought was going to happen, happened, and a few things here or there were a little bit off, but that's that's to be expected, okay? I don't know what it, exactly their, their exact criteria is. They don't exactly share it with us. So more or less, we just go on the information that we have and just our experience with it. But Garcia was was a, was a head-scratcher to me as well. Let's see, there are a couple others here. Arenado, we knew was going to get a, a big downgrade. Sean Murphy was the, one of my big investments. I bought most of my Sean Murphys at like 700 stubs, so I made a ton of stubs off him. Um, who are some of the other confusing ones they want to go over? A Rosarena I thought was going to go up. Not this much. Not this much. But I thought he was going to go up. For sure. 
And Masataka Yoshida, this card really exploded up. And again, kind of confusing, kind of confusing. He's new to the league at 895 OPS on the season and really, really hot over the last three weeks. Totally get that. Totally get that. And, you know, pretty good defense. But he got bumped up to an, to an 83 overall. Okay, he's now rated higher than Julio Rodriguez, who had a great year last year. You know, rookie of the year. You know, not off to a hot start, but like, really? Okay. Interesting. Same thing with like like Turner here. Um, and then we look at some other ones. Where's uh, where's Yandy Diaz? Where they, they bumped him up pretty high too. 84, I think, overall, right? Yeah, Yandy Diaz is another one. Now, don't get me wrong. This was a card I was flipping. I didn't even bother investing in him because I did not think he was going to have plus six. And it really isn't consistent with some of the other cards that got bumped up quite a bit. It just doesn't make all that much uh, sense to me. Now, I know he's a first baseman and defense isn't weighted very high. I get that. But it was a really, really big bump on him. But then you look at guys like Brandon Marsh. Over to Brandon Marsh, who they, they upgraded to a 75, I believe. Yeah, they upgraded Brandon Marsh, who has like the same numbers throughout the season. You know, 974 uh, OPS here. And they barely touched his attributes. Contact first left. That's it. That's all you did. A plus four and a, and a minus one. So a plus three overall for power. It just, uh, and he has good defense. It's just, it's just very uh, confusing to, to what metrics they're using right now. I think it will get cleaned up at the next one. I think they were honestly doing some gatekeeping with the collections, if I'm being honest, because they're seeing the live series overall value uh, tank. But there are just some strange things going on. Same with James Outman over here. Why is James Outman so low and Yanni Diaz is so high? Yanni Diaz doesn't, hasn't exactly had a sparkling career. Like a just giant body of work. So it's it, it's a little confusion. A little confusing. And we go to starting pitching. Strider, I had a feeling, was going to go 90, but he wasn't worth investing because he was way over the 10K value already. Uh, Zach Gallen, oh. <laughs> so happy. That I had 150 Zach Gallons, okay? We just, I made a ton of stubs of Zach Gallon. Most of them I bought at 1,200. So it was just like so much, so much, so much profit there. One quick thing, guys. If you are enjoying the content or you find it helpful, please do me a big favor. Click that like button. Leave me some comments on the questions I ask throughout the video, as well as subscribe if you're not subscribed. One thing that YouTube analytics are telling me is that about 90% of the people that are watching my videos are not subscribed. And a lot of you guys have come multiple times to the videos, about 45% of that. So people that have come to my videos multiple times, hey, click that subscribe button, click that notification button. You'll know when everything goes live and you won't miss any or get in on those investments too late where you're not making as much subs as you possibly can. But Joe Ryan here, you know, Sonny Gray's teammate got upgraded, as well as Pablo Lopez, the other guy, you know, in the, in the rotation there. And I, I, it's not that I don't think these guys should have been upgraded. I do. I think Joe, Joe Ryan going up to a diamond made sense here. And I think that uh, Pablo Lopez going up one made sense. But when we look at, when we look at Sonny Gray here, they decreased his Ks per nine. He's got 11.12 Ks per nine. Now, let's look at Joe Ryan as a 9, to a 67. Sonny Gray, 73. Okay? It's it's just a little strange. Also, Sonny Gray's walks per 9 isn't that bad either. So, it, it's, a, it's a little confusing to to what, what they did to Sonny here, you know? Big massacre, my boy! It's kind of what it feels like. Uh, I, I feel like they kind of did him wrong here, and I still have over 100 Sonny Grays, and I'm going to hold on to him. If you haven't... Uh, Gotten rid of all your stock in Sunny Gray. Hold on, let me another good start yesterday. It doesn't make sense to sell cards. If cards don't get to where you think they're going to get after the first update, don't sell them. Don't sell them yet. Wait on them a little bit, okay? Because if the chances are they're going to increase their value anyway. Cards are at the cheapest right after. You see buy order for Brent Rooker? Yeah, I have like 300 buy orders right in for Brent Rooker right now. Because if this guy only continues to do what he's doing right now, he's going to be a gold easily next time. He's going for 200 change. Now's a good time to get in on some investments early. Get in on them now. We'll see. We'll, we can go over some of the ones that are uh, that the guys have just gotten upgrade. But uh, for sure, Rooker is one that I am going to be investing in heavily so yandi is going to be a good investment at this point because look how low he is i would say invest in yandi diaz right now he's been doing great over the last three weeks so definitely invest 
in Yandy Diaz right now at this price point. He's at quick sell. This is the time to get in quick sell value. Okay, 1544, big deal. You might lose 44 stubs on each investment, 45 stubs on each investment right now. Look at the cards that are about quick sell value right now that have just gotten upgraded. Randy, Ozer Randy Arozarena is a little high, but look at these cards that have just been upgraded or just been downgraded. And sometimes these are the cards you want to hop on. The Saturday and the Sunday right after the update is the time to invest, okay? It, it makes it so your investments have very little risk, okay? If you wait a week or two weeks when you have like the, the roster update videos that you watch that are a little bit closer to, there's more risk involved, okay? There might be less risk involved than saying that you have more data to go on, but more risk involved in terms of the amount of stubs that you are actually risking. Evan Phillips, I thought should have been upgraded this last one, and he was not. So Evan Phillips, another one I think you should invest in. His stats are fantastic. Juan Soto is hitting over 400 over the past few weeks. So I definitely think you should go into that. Pablo Lopez is probably going to be another one that you can invest in. Now, you can't get him at 138. You're going to have to get him at the uh, quick sell value of 1,200 here. But hey, that's not bad. You can actually put those buy orders in now for 1,200. Quick sell. Get in orders at quick sell uh, value. So worst case scenario, they start to fall off. You quick sell them right before the update and you lose nothing. I would say keep an eye on Jonah Heim. Keep an eye on Manny Machado since Machado just got downgraded. He has a couple good weeks. He'll go right back up. Jonah Heim has been doing fantastic things. They upgraded him quite a bit, I think, by four or five uh, tiers. He was one of the ones I did talk about to also go. I would say invest in him again. Now, Jorge Mateo, I thought they did him pretty dirty, if, I, if I'm being honest here. Because uh, Jorge Mateo has very similar numbers to Fernando Tatis right now. And uh, they really didn't upgrade Mateo all that much. They gave him to an 82. It was plus two. And I know he was struggling, and he's still struggling as of right now. But... If you had invested in Mateo, I hope you did not sell them yet. I hope you still have them. I'm, I actually uh, wound up selling mine right beforehand because I was a little iffy when he was going for, I think he, I was, I, I sold most of them for like a thousand, which turned out to be, you know, pretty much the same as the quick sell value here at, at 900. Um, mainly just because I was trying to buy some of the cards at the end of set one so I can get Babe Ruth. And I wasn't so sure what was going to happen at the update. I wasn't so sure, like I said in my last video, that if there was going to be a core collection, which there is a core collection, but it's only core. I do think there is going to be a Legends and Flashbacks collection that's going to encompass all of the collections. I do think that's going to come as well. So that's why I want to make sure that I got at least two of the three of the guys. So I was buying all the cards that I can buy from the last program that were at quick sell value, like the 10K. I was buying all of them because worst case scenario, you quick sell them back for the same exact amount that you uh, bought them for. I still have all my Sunny Grays. I'm holding on to my Sunny Grays uh, because I do think he had another great start last, uh, yesterday. I do think that he is going to get upgraded further so again if you still have the sunny grays hold on to him look his price is already increasing again from yesterday he was already he was down to quick sell value yesterday and he's already creeped up after that good start so hold on to him if you still have him or if, if you're really like eh, I'm, uh, I'm unsure here sell him you know sell him within the next couple days also flipping cards right now is really good Larice robert has been actually been fantastic for the last uh, 10 days or so so he actually might be a pretty good investment right now as well uh he obviously you can see he's uh supercharged right now but uh, yeah, you look at the uh, margins here. It's not a great margin to make stubs. Uh, Matt Olson here got absolutely rocked, which was surprising because he also has like a 900 OPS. Um, but then I didn't realize that he has a 27 arm. Why did they do my boy dirty here with a 27 arm? That's going to keep his overall. I know he's a first baseman. It's not a huge deal. But it's going to keep his overall down quite a little bit. Corbin Carroll was another one I made a, a ton of stubs on, and he's also still hitting well. You might want to invest in him early, even though, yeah, he's a little bit over quick sell. Look at the quick sells, okay, guys? Know what your quick sell values are. At 80, it's 400. 81 is 600. 82 is 900. 84 is 1,200. Um, 84, I mean, 83 is 1,200. 84 is 1,500. Look at those sell nows, okay? If you can buy them for quick sell, you want to take a little gamble, take a gamble because it's really not of a gamble at all. Ooh, you might lose six stubs, you know? Buy them now. Right after the update is when you need to buy. Buy, 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 buy. All right, so I am going to let you know. We're going to do an early bird special later in the week, probably about Thursday. I like to do it about two weeks out. So we're going to do it on Thursday. This was just a little, you know, wrap up of what they did so far. But I do want to go over just to talk a little bit and see a little bit about this season two XP reward path. 
and what's in here. So they made most of this stuff no sell. Stuff that you get early. Except for the boss packs. If you're a no money spent player, and even if you're not a no money spent player, unless you plan on like really using these cards, like you must have these cards. When you get them, sell them. Look at the prices at them right now. You can make hundreds of thousands of stubs if you get this done on Saturday today. Or even this weekend, you can make a ton of stubs and buy in about a week, they're going to be worth like a fraction, maybe 25% of what they're worth now. So the second you get these cards, these boss packs, especially this first boss pack, sell it. Sell it. There's no reason to keep it. Really not. None of these cards are that much better than anything that is currently in the game. So get rid of it. Please get rid of it. You look at the clutch on these cards. They're not good. Okay, 97 clutch on this card. What's Bringer of Rain over here? Okay, he's got 125 clutch. But besides the point, you know, they're, 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 nothing, they're nothing too special that you can't live without them for a week or two and just let their prices tank, okay? It's just like the last one. Any cards that you can sell from here, like this kaiju, these kaiju cards over here too, sell them immediately. They're going to just drop in value. <laughs> it's like, I want to play with them, but you know what? I can wait a week. Oh, fun fact, Sean Green, he was a cover boy for uh, MLB The Show before it was MLB The Show, so he's also going to get that David Wright boost if you're uh, still taking advantage of, of that. Yeah, so when you get to these things, sell them immediately. I'm looking to actually complete it uh, probably today, if I can, tonight. I'm sure they're going to lose some value by that because a lot of people are definitely playing right now. But I, didn't, I couldn't really deal with the lag yesterday after the update. The servers were absolute poo-poo. And uh, yeah, I have a toddler, so, you know, times don't really work. So if I couldn't play right then, that was kind of... Uh, that, you know, can't can't just leave it on my uh, my wife to do everything. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, there was that. And then, you know, at night, same thing. Couldn't get to play. I did play a little bit this morning. And I'll, you know, you can see my uh, my progress a little bit. Where am I? I'm at uh, yeah, 70, 70k right here. I pretty much did the, just the team affinities. These are the things that you should do immediately. Uh, get the first thing you got to do is make sure that you do the showdown. Showdown should be the first thing you do. Followed by the moments. And then once you get the moments, you're going to hop into the conquest with the cards that you picked. So you can complete these uh, captain's moments uh, here. So I've done some of them already, as you can see. And it's going to be a way that you can kind of double or triple dip and get as much of this XP done as uh, possible. Get as many of these cards done as possible so you get through these programs as quickly as possible. As possible and you can use these cards you know while they're still you know relatively decent and you can get them to collect for your set too and get closer to getting that juicy juicy David Wright card which is I'm gonna be picking I'm a Mets fan I'm a little biased I don't think he's the best card in the bunch I think that Randy Johnson is gonna be the most dominant card in the bunch but you know you're only gonna get to use him every five games or so and people are probably gonna quit on you really quickly too so for me I'm gonna pick David Wright because again big homer here so my, I'm gonna let my bias uh, show be honest about my bias see and I am going to pick David Wright, then followed by Randy Johnson. Then we'll pick Hank Aaron, who's a great card too. I'm going to pick him uh, last. Let's take a look at those cards. So how am I doing on the core? <laughs> the core reseeger. See what I did there? Uh, so I'm actually not that far away. I do need to finish the uh, the Negro League program and the Mexico League and the Charisma program. And then I should and then I should actually uh, be able to do this pretty easily. Uh, finish Battle Royale too, because Battle Royale cards are, are core cards also. And this is from the Lefty Lucy, and these cards are jumping up to pretty much uh, as much as you can get them for too, which stinks because I did sell those and I meant to buy those back and I completely forgot about them. But you can get these BR cards done, the couple Charisma cards, and the couple Mexico Series cards, and I will have uh, this done. Is this a BR card? I didn't even see this card. When did this card come out? I don't even know when this card came out. Yesterday? Where? It does not even tell you the location. That is interesting. Don't know where the heck you get that card, but I guess I'll have to find that out. Let's set to these glorious cards. Glorious cards. Oh, David. David, David, David. Let's uh, just look at all the statistics here. David is just an amazing card. He's more or less a slightly better version of the Derek Jeter card. And he has shortstop secondary, which is... What? Okay, I would have liked if they gave Jeter third base or second, uh, second base secondary then, if that's the case, because David Wright only played third base. But hey... Whatever, that'd be, that would be cool if they would have given that to him. I mean, you played Jeter at uh, second base anyway, and he gets a diamond defense at tier four regardless. So, eh, there's that. Uh, <laughs> this Hammer and Hank card is really good as well. Uh, really good card. I love Hank Swing, so 
He might uh, take over Sammy Sosa's spot in right field when I finally get this card. And of course, the big unit, Randy Johnson here. These numbers are just disgusting. And he has that funky delivery, which is very, very hard to read. I struggled hitting him so much last year. You would occasionally get a game if a guy had no control and was throwing it over the middle, but otherwise it was like playing a guessing game. So these cards are absolutely delicious and I can't wait to get them. I think you get 90 cards just for the program. So that's not too bad, not too shabby. You almost have Rich Gossage just from playing the program, which is pretty sweet. But I want to know, how did you do on your investments? How much stubs did you make out with? Like I said, I made out with a little over a million stubs. I was buying some stuff. I'm probably going to buy that Mickey Mantle. I might wait a couple days since I'm still grinding out all the programs. I'm not going to be using that card in any ranked seasons or anything like that. So I might wait a few days. Don't quite want to buy my 300k stubs. It's, you know, it's a third of my stub count right now. But I'm definitely going to buy them because that card looks absolutely filthy. I want to know what some cards on your radar that you can't wait to use. Obviously for me, it's that David Wright, Mickey Mantle are my two big ones, followed by that Randy Johnson. There are a lot of other fun cards too, but those are the big ones for me. Let me know in that comment section what cards are you looking forward to, and let me know which investments worked out the best for you, and what investments you are currently looking at now to get in early on that ground floor. Remember, look at the quick sell values. Buy anything that is within like a hundred of the quick sell values, and it's pretty much a non-risk. Okay guys, I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable if you did do me a favor click that like button leave me some comments on those questions that i liked if you're not subscribed subscribe and i will catch you on the next one later